Hello friends and welcome to video number 63 on the Mindful Making YouTube channel. If you're into yarn and into knitting, you have landed in just the right place. My name is Jane, I'm a Danish Australian. I live in Asquith, which is north of, uh, of Sydney in Australia. And I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where this video is recorded on and where I live. That is the um, traditional lands of the Darug and Gurungai people and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that acknowledgement to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait, Island, Torres Strait Islander people watching this video and also extend that acknowledgement and respect to the traditional owners of the lands where you are watching from. So welcome. It is Friday the 12th of July 2024. I've just finished my work day and I thought I could just sit down and chat to you before my daughter Astrid arrives uh, for dinner. So that would be lovely. Um, so I hope you have your project ready, a cup of tea, coffee, a wine, water, whatever you fancy. And let's sit down and knit together for the next half hour or so. Here in um, Australia, in Sydney, it is winter. We have had some dreary days over the last week where it's been grey and rainy and cold. But today the sun is out and I just had a, uh, in my lunch break earlier today, I sat outside enjoying the sun. Um, so that was absolutely beautiful. I have a few finished objects to share with you today and also an ongoing project and a and then something that I've just started on um, that I will share as well. You can find everything about me and mindful making on my website which is called mindfulmaking.com.au from there, there are links to this channel, to the um, blog post where all the show notes are and the links to what I'm talking about in this video. Um, you can find that on the website and then there is also patterns and yarns available for purchase if you're interested. And links to Instagram where I am more active so that is where you know that's the main channel for what is happening here in in my world of knitting I'm curious about what you've been working on since we last spoke which is about three weeks ago um, and um, well you can put it in the comment below and what you've enjoyed over the last um, two weeks, three weeks, and I would love to hear. Uh, one thing that I have really enjoyed is I've knitted a, a gift, um, which I also talked about in the last episode, which was all about gift knitting. And then I am working on a collaboration with Great Southern Yarn, and um, it's a vest that I will share a bit later. It's not finished yet, but it's progressing very well. Well, let's get into the crafty, yarny uh, knitting part. I am today wearing the Isla sweater. I just had to think. It's the Isla sweater and it's a design by Lene Holmes Amsu. And it is from her book called Heather Hill. I knitted this. I started working on this um, July last year and finished just before Christmas. Although it had a gap in between where I was sort of done knitting, but then it took some time to uh, sew in um, the sleeves and just put it all together. It is an all over, oh, it's a bit of sun shining here, all over cable and texture. So cabling down the front on either side and also on the back down the center of or actually on the underside of the sleeves, which is um, not what you normally see. You would normally possibly see, you know, a cable sitting on top 
uh, from the shoulder down. And in the middle here are the um, blackberry stitches. Blackberry? Yes, blackberry. And which I've talked about at length in previous videos. So go back and uh, <laughs> see what I mentioned. If you've watched it, you know that that wasn't my favorite. The finished project, or oh, yes, this uh, jumper, uh, I absolutely love it. I uh, uh, wear it for work uh, and I feel um, both groovy and at the same time, I don't know whether professional, but um, you know, work, work dress, uh, work uh, wear type wearings. So um, I certainly love it. And my daughter loves it too. So although I've tried to suggest different, you know, similar designs that doesn't include these blackberry stitches, because it is pearl three together on every single, no, every second, sorry, every second row. She's still, uh, there's nothing that tops this design. So I will, of course, knit her one. Whether that will be the project for the next project is still question mark. I don't know yet. Let me just show you the, um, whoops. The Heather Hill book, you may know it. This is in Danish. I am unaware whether it's available in English. Some of the designs, however, can be found on leknit.dk um, homepage uh, in English as well. So um, let's see if we can find it. It is here. Yeah, it is. It is a an absolutely amazing jumper, and I'm so happy with my version. I used the combination of the Super Soft and Titicaca, one strand of each, from um, Holzgarn and um, yarn that I carry in my shop, in colorways bleached white for the Super Soft and Ecru for the Titicaca. For my daughter's version, I think I will go with the um, Coast Yarn, the Cotton and Wool Blend, and the Titicaca together, but also in a white or in um, in a silver grey colorway, so light grey. But we'll see many, many beautiful designs in in this book by Lena Holmesamsu. So that's what I'm wearing and a little uh, tiny uh, scarf here just to uh, yeah. look fancy. What else of finished objects? Well, I um, in the last video you saw that I have bought a new um, pattern book. Apologies for the wobbly camera. And this is from the Lakeside Stitches. And I talked about the first design that I wanted to knit from this book, which just had every single design in this book is amazing. And I would love to knit them all. So I decided on knitting the Nava using three strands of yarn, a coast and an old um, merino cashmere blend and holding it with a um, silk mohair from Isaiah. And uh, that is finished. And I would love to show you live, you show you it live, but I can't. It has been shipped off as a gift. So it's somewhere between the southern and northern hemisphere. But Instead, I will insert just a short little, little video of pictures of this beautiful design.
absolutely stunning piece of um, knitting, if I should say it myself. It's half fisherman's rib, where on the right side you go uh, knit stitches one below. Pretty easy. It is quite uh, yarn hungry though. And um, <laughs> with my calculations of meterage of yarn use this year I've been a bit slack so I haven't been following up but this one I did because I thought when there are three three strands held together that would amount to some meters of yarn so I used 3390 meters for that jumper which will add significantly to the tally of the meters of yarn knitted up this year. I don't know whether you can see and um, it will do maybe I'll see here maybe you can see the yarn that I've taped into the page so the whoop, silk mohair then the coast and then um, the other way the some old yarn that I'm sitting in my stash. I just need to put it around here. So those three yarns held together. Beautiful, um, beautiful fabric, lovely to knit. I didn't weigh the total weight or measure the weight of the finished uh, garment. I just used the silk mohair meterage to calculate. But even though that it's quite it's um it's quite a thick fabric and squishy, but it didn't feel heavy. So I hope the recipient will love it and wear it often as a warm, cozy, um, bit oversized, um, you know, just relaxing a jumper. I was slightly off in terms of gauge, so my gauge was 17 stitches and the pattern says 14. So I went up to a size medium where the recipient would uh, she is a size small but I hope it will fit her nicely and still have that sort of it is a boxy relaxed fit so um, that's the first finished object I loved it it did take some time but I really enjoyed uh, the process of that so that's the first finished object then the second finished object is a pair of socks that i started oh now it's just a leaf blower going off outside i hope it won't disturb too much but that's what happening what's happening so here are a finished pair of socks this is difficult to see on the camera they are a charcoal gray. It's a two by two ribbing with a heel flap and gusset. A size 43, 44 European shoe size and um, two by two, as I said. And I used, I have 72 stitches here on a 2.5 millimeter needle. So these are ready to be gifted again a lot of gift knitting happening at the moment um, on sunday or during the weekend uh, with a birthday coming up uh, the yarn is the um, gavetta classic by phil colana and i will just get the yarn so i can share the color number with you so you have that this is what is left of two skeins of yarn of 50 gram yarn. So there are 210 meters in uh, one skein, 50 gram. This color is called a 956. Yeah, and it's a classic, a traditional 75, no 80 wool and then 20 nylon. So 80-20. Love this sock yarn, and especially, and I've talked about this before, especially for the um, the men in the family, where it's just more traditional, not too loud colors. 
And um, yeah, that resulted in this pair of new socks. Knitted two at a time, top down. Yeah, and one and a half skein. So that is the that is the second finished object. And that is then it for the finished objects. What is on my needles then? <clears throat> In the last episode, I wore a vest that I have knitted up and that will become a design. And it was a test, my test of, of that design. <clears throat> in a green and I um, then moved on to knitting it up in the great southern yarn that was kindly gifted me so that's sponsored and she gifted me two skeins of this you know plush I will show you the yarn <laughs> just in a minute great southern yarn label so color Judy Kazap 2 it's an 80% Australian Merino and 20% Nylon 8 ply DK, so 210 meters per 100 gram. And um, I had two skeins of, uh, of this beautiful color. And where am I? I am maybe here. This is what is left of the two skeins. It's a thick yarn. It's a very plump yarn. It's maybe almost it looks like a tin ply or a worsted weight. Lovely and soft and beautiful to knit with. So uh, this is what left of the two skeins, and uh, I'm I'm not finished yet. Here it is. Oh, on the other side. Here we go. So I am um, 20 centimeters, eight inches below the armhole. So still the hem and also the arm and neck band to be knitted. So I will get more yarn very soon. Um, but this is the vest design. Still no name. Where is it? It's here. It has this twisted rib detail down the side and also on an ankled shoulder seam that just is ankle towards the back and then that twisted rib will be repeated on the um, neckline and on the armhole and on the hem which will be a split hem yeah so a lovely squishy yarn you will see a slight color difference between the two yarns so i alternated skeins when i got below the armhole and uh, you know could knit round for the body on the back uh, it's clearer where you know where the second skein came in but that's just the beauty of hand dyed yarn yeah, it will be interesting to see if uh, Alexia can match the uh, the color again, uh, or I will just uh, rip a you know five centimeters back and um, alternate it in with the um, with this with the other two skeins that I've used now. Name. Well, it doesn't have a name yet. Maybe a suggestion was the Mindful West, which is an excellent name. Any other suggestions are welcome too. Um, but I really like this. Um, I love the simplicity, but then, you know, just a few details here and there. This gauge is 17 stitches 
on 10 centimeters, four inches, and I'm knitting on a 5.5 millimeter needle, a US 9. So it's nice and quick. I think I've knitted this um, in the last three, four days, evenings. I will say that I have knitted a lot. I've watched a lot of TV <laughs> lately. Yesterday, I binge watched crime series um, airing here on SBS On Demand. It's a Norwegian series. It's called Wisting. Wisting? Lovely. Five episodes last night. So, um, yeah, um, bedtime was a bit uh, too late for my liking, but I had a great time just uh, knitting away here, round and round and round on this beautiful vest. So hopefully, in a couple of weeks' time, when I uh, get more yarn, I can finish this. And I will also endeavor to finish the... Um, the pattern soon um, so maybe it won't be long a couple of weeks or well it has to be tech edited as well so um, there will be looking for test knitters in the not too distant future yeah that is um, that is it currently it's um, its name is Great Southern Vest because the sponsor and the yarn highly reckon I can highly recommend if you're on uh, you know in Australia check out great southern yarn it's beautiful hand dyed and um, locally made uh, yarn so uh, beautiful yeah that is what is on the needles I have in here my little um, this is my little um, party bag <laughs> oh, it's where I host house, not host, house my uh, any sock project and um, I'm about to start the a new, you know, two by two go to socks and this color is called 973, also a bit a classic, um, like the grays I showed you before on a 2.5 millimeter needle so that uh, I think will be casted on and then I can always carry a project with me wherever I go so um, no waiting time is wasted anywhere you know even traffic lights shouldn't say that but um, come on the needles very soon since we last spoke I've also accidentally bought some more yarn no actually not accidentally because I did run out of the silk mohair for the Nava uh, jumper so I had to order more so I ordered I looked for yeah silk mohair and then you know to get free shipping uh, I wanted to add some more and this uh, my order was to Sunspun Yarn, which is a yarn store online and uh, brick and mortar shop in Victoria. So I ordered from there, and then when uh, I looked at their webpage, I saw that they had um, unspun yarn. And I thought, mm, I love my Plotulopi sweater. It has a hole in it and I need to repair it. So why not buy five cakes of <laughs> one spun yarn? So of course, well, I bought five um, cakes of this one spun yarn. It does come up a bit more blue on the screen. I don't know what it is about the lighting here. Um, Maybe, maybe I need to wash the windows to get in more light in my uh, my little flat here. But this is the unspun. It is differently spun than uh, Plutolopi. It's sort of, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's a bit more like a, uh, you know, a cotton, just like fluffy cotton. 
where the plotter lobby is more strands together. This is a bit more sort of, and, and it's not blown either. No, can't find the words, but lovely yarn. And then I thought to pair it with a super soft holst, and this is the colorway Nuka, where I, yeah, as you see, I have a cone of the Nuka, so I thought, well, I'll put those together and see if I could knit up a blanket. And of course, I had to try it out. I'm just very careful here because because the unspun yarn, you know, breaks quite easily. And I have lost stitches and there are no needles here because this is on a four, no, a 5.5 .5 US 9 needle. I had cast it on 80 stitches and then I thought I would just knit panels, just straight um, garter stitch and possibly just add in a stripe here and there um, substituting the super soft with another color but keeping keeping the unspun throughout yeah as you see it's been sitting idle for some time and maybe that will gain some love now that I can free up the 5.5 needles while the Great Southern Vest is, um, is just sitting in a waiting position. And I don't know whether you can see it on camera, but the Nuka yarn is just slightly visible and gives a bit of, I'm about to say, tweedy effect. Just a slightly um, variation in, in the fabric. And then I thought, you know, having three or four panels of these and then um, seam them together with possibly a contrast or just double stranded the uh, super soft for a slight difference, just keeping it quite neutral. I haven't decided that yet. So far, it's just like this. When knitting, though, it's just, you know, I have so much yarn now with these, uh, these because they are wound up on this double. So it runs double from this ball or this cake. And I only use one strand. So I'll get double the meterage of one here. And I have, you know, then I, 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 you know, carry this little, this little fella so that I can just um, carefully wind it up as I go. Initially, I couldn't figure out why it sort of got entangled. And then there was a, you know, a strand that whether it came from the inside, I couldn't figure it out until I saw that it, it's running, you know, double here and I only use one many blankets many blankets and it smells delightfully of sheep it will need a proper wash for my daughter to love it it might be a blanket for her I think she'll love a blanket like this or it will be for myself or it will be for a gift for something in the future. I am enjoying myself knitting this. A question from the last episode where, you know, where I knitted with three strands and also here, you know, when you, when you knit with um, more than one strand of yarn held together. A question was, how do you ensure that both yarns are included in each stitch? Well, you have to pay a bit of attention so that you um, catch both strands each time. I guess if you are an English knitter and you know moving moving the yarn around the needle it's less prone to sort of split and just grab one 
a strand of yarn. My advice would be, well, don't be afraid of combining strands of yarn. Hold them double if you add a mohair and alpaca with something else, you know. You, you just have endless possibility in terms of character, fabric, thickness of yarn, weight of jumper, uh, colors, endless opportunities, you know. And if you go for a thinner yarn, you have the flexibility to just add strands to get to the weight you want to. Um, one advice would be to look for needles that are not too sharp. When I knit with, well, this is a bad example with the 5.5 millimeter, but I knit with me my uh, Chao Gu needles where the tip is quite um, sharp, sharp, sharp. Um, but you can have m other needle tips or needles, knitting needles that are less pointy. That will help. Then, of course, the main advice is just to pay slightly more attention that you see both strand on each stitch. But if you, you know, just grab one, you can see it easily and you can run down a few rows and, and pick it up because the other strand would just sit behind. So, um, you know, on the wrong side, it would just be a sort of a, like a float uh, running behind the fabric so you can just easily pull it up. In, if you see it afterwards, when you get to that stitch again, you can see it. So no problem at all. No problem at all. Don't hesitate to combine yarn for the weight that you want to and the type of fabric you want. So yeah, let the creative juices flow and be the a king, the master of your project. Very nice little uh, thingy here with the unspun yarn. If it breaks, it's quite easy just to, you know, to um, rejoin. And then you can just overlay. And a bit of, um, oh, it's not manipulation, just, and then you have your strand again. So it's um, super easy. And I really love this fabric, 5.5 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to knit on that, as well as the new socks. It's always good to sit here chatting with you. I get new inspiration and new motivation to get uh, to get um, knitting on uh, new projects so that's uh, super exciting what is also super exciting is that bendigo sheep and wool show it's coming up not this weekend but next weekend from the 19th to 21st of july and i will be going again this year <laughs> So my knitting friend from here, my local knitting friend, one of them, Vera, is coming too. And we are on the plane Thursday morning, 18th of July, flying to Melbourne, train to Bendigo. And then we will stay in an Airbnb with five other knitters and podcasters. And hello, Ali. Um, Fiberbound in Adelaide, um, and Guy from um, Perfect Pairings, and then some other uh, podcasters and knitters that I have to check out before we meet and, you know, share our house together. So apologies if you watch this and I don't mention you, I will. Um, so I have a bit of uh, checking out to do before Thursday, so I'm looking forward to that. So I know where my weekend, again, will be spent on the couch, knitting away. Um, so Bendigo is coming up and um, I will bring a budget 
so that I can buy some a, 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 f a few pieces of yarn. So that will be exciting and I'm looking very much forward to that. If you are there, please don't be shy. Just come over, say hi, I would love to meet you and um, have a chat about our common passion for knitting. So I'm looking very much forward to a weekend away with wonderful friends, plenty of knitting and a glass of red wine in the evening. So that would be absolutely lovely. Other things that uh, lately I've, I'm sort of um, practicing, not, not practicing, I've done that, is just this about treasuring uh, small moments uh, of joy, you know, and it could be, it could be just a young father playing at the local um, playground here with his son or daughter reading a book together, hearing them laugh. The other day when I was out walking, a Chinese couple had their um, music running and then they were dancing with each other. Lovely. So you just, you just smile and just, oh, that's just amazing. So those uh, small moments. I subscribe to a, well, this is completely not knitting related. So just a warning. Um, I subscribe to a fruit and veg delivery sort of every second week and it's called Funky Food. And it is fruit and veggies that does not conform or, you know, as nature do, it doesn't necessarily comply, conform, com conform to um, supermarket aesthetical standards for size of fruit and veg, you know, and because of that, that they have quite strict that a cucumber is so long and so thick or a banana is something or a, an avocado is a certain size and shape. A lot of, of those that doesn't that does have the odd shape here and there, often are just um, thrown out. So this funky food, and there will be other uh, providers of that um, same type, you know, they, um, they take these that would otherwise be dismissed, fruit and veg, and put them in boxes. You don't know what you get, it's sort of seasonal. You do always get the basis, so, you know, potatoes, carrots, onions, <clears throat> lettuce, avocado has been there always and some fruit, whether it's apples, oranges. Um, but you know, I get, I get that I receive a box every second week and I have the small box, which is just for one, two people. And it lasts me the fortnight. I don't, often I just have to, uh, you know, add in an apple or a banana here and there. But receiving that every second Wednesday is just like, it's just like Christmas. You know, get that box, open it up and see, you know, the fresh produce in there. And yes, I'm just amazed and I laugh with those, you know, tiny avocados. I had once a banana that had grown together. So two bananas in, and they, um, they had their separate <sighs> coat, I don't know what the word is, skat, banana skat, whatever that's called, banana peel, that's what it's called, um, <laughs> so much fun, so I wanted to share my exciting, my excitement with you, so at the end, you will just see a sort of an unpacking video, not of yarn, but of odd shaped uh, fruit and veg. So uh, I hope you uh, will enjoy that little moment of a treasurable moment with me. That brings us to the end and I see it's also getting quite dark in here. Mm. Thank you for being here with me. I uh, hope you um, had a few moments of slow 
where you could just sit back, enjoy your knitting project and feel grounded. And if you want to support this channel, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. Love to, um, I'm very grateful for, for any support of you and I hope you are all well and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon until the next time. <laughs> bye bye. Let's see what's in the box this week. And look, here we have the cutest little avocado. Love them. They would have been disregarded from the, um, you know, the supermarkets. And what the end here? Probably oh, what's that? A mandarin heart shape, and then there is some coriander to have that for tonight. Mm, mushrooms. Ooh. There we go. Yeah, and then there are carrots and potatoes and an onion, probably too big for and then a broccoli as well, whether it's too big or whether it's lost something, you know, too big for the supermarket shelves. Mm -hmm.